All right, on this thing, I'm going to put a valve cover gasket on it. It's got a nuisance leak. It's almost even hard to see. You can see the oil piling up right there, right where that light's shining. And it's getting and dripping over onto the side of this converter and stinking. What is leaking, as you can see right through there, that little I can get a light on it. Yeah, right below this bolt, it won't focus on it. Should have got too much light in there. Yeah, right there. Okay, what we have is sort a of plug in the back of that. It is uh, more than likely leaking. I'm going to see if I've got one handy. See this plug right here? That's what's leaking. It's no big deal to change. Um, I've got a couple of them. I've got a valve cover gasket hanging right there. The spark plug holes. It's kind of like a Hemi. You get these through the pipe gaskets. So I'll go ahead and change those. Clean that up. Make sure the timing chain's okay. Um, and then this. I took a chance and emailed the guy I got the alternator from. He said send it back to him, he'll give me another new one. So that'll be down for two weeks. I'll have to get the alternator off tonight, get it packaged up, get it mailed off to him. That'll take a week to get to him and a week to get it back because he said, you know, I'll give you this RA number, which is basically a return authorization number. And then, uh, I didn't get that damn thing fixed because it's really getting to be a nuisance. I'm um, not having that thing running. But uh, I'll get to working on this. All right, first, you want, first thing you're going to take off is that little hood that goes over. It's got three screws in it. There's one there, there's one there. There's supposed to be one up here, but that's broke off. Um, or actually, it's right there. Then you just lift these tabs up, and that unhooks the coil. Unless you got the 2000 and up coils, which are these, and then they just unclip. Okay? Then, 10 millimeter bolt, take the ground wire off. You unplug all four of those coil packs and just kind of stuff them up out of your way somewhere back here. That way they're not in your way. Um, I've got all the coil packs loose. I'm going to go ahead and loosen this air pipe up, and then I'm going to use my drill in a bit. And just go ahead and spin these out. It doesn't take me just a second. Okay, getting those four or those eight bolts out took all of like 10 seconds. Took me longer to turn the camera off and shut it down. But what you want to do is when you pull these things up is inspect them to make sure there's no oil and water down in the hole. See that one's dry? No oil and water. Because what happens, you see a seal around there? That seal will go bad. You run through rain, it'll come past this here and fill that hole up. Or if that gasket around that spark plug hole leaks. Okay, that one's dry. Good shape. We know these coils are good. You know, we've been driving it around on these. This one here is okay. It looked like it might have been damp when I took it out. And then, last one. It's dry. Just de-electric grease on it. That's all you want. Now I'm going to get the rest of the bolts out. Like I said, you got that air pipe bolt there. There's another one right there. Um, I will go ahead and unplug the injectors right here. There's four of them. Just to get that harness up out of my way. Because they lay right on top of the valve covers. And I will unplug the cam position sensor right here. That wire will come up out of the way. And then I'll put a bungee cord on the gas pedal. And then you can take the top timing belt inspection cover off. And then you're literally almost there. So let me get those other things off and we'll, we'll go from there. All right, there's a typical 130,000 mile motor. Chain's still tight. Make sure we got both of the hockey pucks. You get a look down there, make sure you got your bottom chain tensioner, which is just as past this hole right in here. And you'll see it down there at the bottom, okay? You want to make sure that one's intact 
and this top one is intact and that chain isn't sunk into it a half an inch okay and the chain is snug and then you'll be okay and it's just a matter of putting a gasket on it put it back together they've been using some crummy oil in it so everything's brown in here there's some oils that that turn brown under excessive heat there's some oils you can use that won't turn brown under excessive heat um, I like Castrol DTX you know it's just a preference I've been using it for ever you know it's been around that long let me get this gasket out we'll clean it up and start putting it back together all right this is the old gasket off you can see how how stiff this thing is it has no flex no give this uh, cam plug is hard as a brick you can't even squeeze it it's almost like a cracker okay here's our replacement see how pliable it is it's nice and loose and rubbery see that here I mean I can squeeze that almost flat it's nice and spongy what you might want to do is even put just a little smudging of RTV on this this little hump part nowhere else nowhere else is going to need it um, these are generally good gaskets they don't leak that often you know if you change them like you're supposed to uh, I recommend them you know these things will go 50 75 thousand on a spark plug I would recommend changing the valve cover gaskets you know once every couple years or if you see it leaking change it don't you know don't wait and wait and wait until there's oil all over the place and it's Looks like the Exxon Valdez is stopped in your driveway, you know, get it taken care of. It, it's not that much work. And even on the V6 models, you just got two banks like this. You got this bank on this side, which will be a little bit farther, a little bit farther back, and this bank on this side will be a little bit farther forward to offset from the pistons. And there'll only be three on each side instead of four. Uh, you can see my little plug for the ATW head, uh, which is the ones with the EGR valves. They also make a, a small port head and a large port head. I don't think you can see mine from here. Yeah, yeah, you can actually. Okay. See these ports right here? See how small they are? See these ports right here? how big they are okay um, the newer model heads have smaller ports how many exhaust ports exhaust ports are just a little bit smaller over here if I can get a good zoom on them let me get a micrometer see what we're looking at okay I've adjusted the micrometer on this one to just Barely fit in here. You can see it, okay? Let me go down here. You can see it better, okay? In the top and in the bottom, okay? That's the 2000 up head. Here is, see the difference? That's at the bottom and that's at the top. There's a half inch difference there, okay? And on the exhaust side, let me do the exhaust one. We'll do the exhaust on the small head. That's a round port anyways, okay, just barely fits in there, okay, there's probably a uh, 3 sixteenths, maybe a quarter inch difference in the exhaust side. These are the heads you want when you're building a, you know, 200 horse motor. It's tougher to get them out of this motor. So, the motor that's in this car is 2000 and up, and it, uh, it actually feels peppier than the one on the other side of that black car up there. You can see the tail light sticking up right over the top. That's the one that was wrecked that I put together. Okay, this is the Craigslist car here. The body isn't. But all the exterior parts, motor, hood, everything that'll bolt on this car is Craigslist. But uh, let me get uh, this valve cover back on. 
All right, there's the new gasket, all cleaned up. New spark plug hole gasket. Then you get your valve cover gasket with the plug in the back. Everything's cleaned up. I pulled the spark plugs out, regapped them, cleaned them up, cleaned all the dielectric grease on them, re anti seized them. You only need a dab. Um, and I mean a dab. Put it on the bottom threads. Do not get it on the electrode because it will not burn off. Um, no, Rianne, I seized them in. I'm going to put the electric grease back on them when I put them, the spark plugs back in. And then I'm going to go ahead and get this valve cover cleaned up. And go ahead and get it on. And uh, start putting this thing back together. I got the valve cover all cleaned up. I just got the bolt started. Because I'm going to show you in the order you want to do these in. Is you want to do these three first. And then go around the outside. Because what you want is you want to push the center of this valve cover down as flat as you can against these spark plug holes. And then you work your outside down. If you push this side down, it's going to push it in. You push this side down, it's going to push it in. It's going to have a big hump. Then when you tighten these three bolts down, they're going to leak. Um, and this is one of the situations where I said I should have said hold my beer and watch this. I sprayed this down with a uh, paint stripper. You know, get all the varnish out from inside the valve cover. It's still hot, actually. Um, took it outside, let it sit for 15 minutes, and I went and hit it with the hose. The damn hose nozzle went down in here, sprayed water, shot it back up in my face, on my clothes, on my arms. My eyes are still burning. Um, I couldn't run fast enough to get in the house to get that stripper out of my eyes. I mean, inside of my, my right eye is just stinging. But anyways, I'm going to tighten them down with my drill. I'm going to put it on a clutch. About number 10 is about all you need and just crank them down. Okay, and this is how you tighten these down. Put your coil packs in, put your air pipe bracket back on that bolt right there, put your injectors back in, we're going to clean that up a little bit, and then uh, we'll put it together a little bit at a time. Oh, I got everything greased up, I like to put these things in, not so tight, and go through and tighten them by hand. That'll be it for the power tools. All right, oil's full, water's full. Hope we're nothing to fan belts. <laughs> Tops and pistons are wet with brake cleaning. Spark plug gap was about 25,000, and this thing calls for 32. So, what I went and did is bumped it up to 32 on all the plugs. The plugs don't have, uh, I don't know, 10, 15,000 miles on them. But I thought I got all the brake oil out. See that little bit of oil right there? I thought I got it out. That'll be all right. Cleaned off as much up here as I could. Down here. Wasn't a bad oil leak. I mean, everything's still pretty dry from when I put the motor in. 
a little more than the oil filter goes down there. You got a little bit of oil sitting on the block. But other than that, I think it's ready to go. I gotta go to Birmingham and it's twice this week. So, 